Yes, we are on. Okay, fine. So we look at, especially in this week's parsha, the Torah scroll. Okay, I know now. Now I know what I'm supposed to be doing. Okay, it's supposed to be like this. Okay, so now we look at the Torah scroll. Let's move it back. Okay, so the Torah scroll <laughs> is a map. Okay. Mm-hmm. That usually when we look at a map, and everybody who's familiar with looking at a map, looks at always the top part of the map is north. Okay. Okay? Yeah. And then that's south, and then that's west, and that's east, right? Okay? Mm -hmm. So the interesting thing is the Torah scroll is also a map, but it's kind of different. The top part of your Torah scroll is east. Oh, wow. We're always consider and focus on the east. Okay? Because and, of Jerusalem? Yes, because Jerusalem were, you know, and, but, but more than this, what I'm going to tell you right now, I'm trying to figure this thing out there. Why is it being not nice to me? Okay? Just trying to stabilize it. Okay, that's much better. Yeah. All right. So the Torah scroll... We say the top part is the east, not the north. The top part is the north, like the west whole says. Okay? And then you have south. Now, the, the, so, and if you're looking at the Torah and the letters, the way the letters are for, so the, the right, that's called the south, okay. and the left is called north. north. Okay? And it puts a lot of things together, and I heard... Then that's why, in Hebrew, we read from right to left. Because north is always considered the direction of evil and the direction of darkness. And therefore, north. You've got it. So we read from right to left. Because as we're reading from right to left, we're conquering or bringing light into the darkness and conquering the north. Wow. Okay? So that's why south would be considered yes chesed, north would be considered din or judgment, hmm. right? East and then west, okay? What's east, what's west? Actually, no, it goes the other way around. Really, um, it's not that this is good and this is evil, but just in terms of space. East, west is just, that. what? I've always east is the shechina and west is the opposite of the shechina. from the right to the left in Hebrew, I've always wondered that now I understand. Yeah. So really what we're doing is we're reading as we're moving light into the darkness, okay, when we do that. Okay, a lot more to discover as we go on. Yeah. But right now we're in the prayer of Elijah, okay? Oh, wow. okay. Here we go. <laughs> it's called Petach Eliyahu. Yeah. That's what you have here. We started it, but luckily all the people who were in the previous class were not, are not here now, okay? There's more people who are usually here, and we don't have them. He has, thanks. You've got this. You've got one, Okay. We started this, but we're going to start it again because really this is an unbelievable special prayer. This is in English, of course. It's in Hebrew. And if you want, there is in the Nusach Sfard and the Sfardi sinners have it. Ashkenaz won't have it. Okay? Um, but the Nusach Sfard and the Sfardi have this in the beginning of the Siddur prayer book right here. Okay? Do, 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 do. After you get through all of this, right here. Pesach Eliyahu. Okay? And this original text here, this is the Aramaic. Good to practice if you want to practice that. Can I sit with all these things? Pass it around. Here. Here. I got a Hebrew right here. Oh, okay. Okay. Great. Do you want Hebrew? It's a little bit smaller, but it still has it. Yeah, okay, so so the idea really is this is an unbelievable prayer that is instituted in the beginning of the prayers that it should be said, right? Before you pray. Before you pray because it is has a special ability to have your prayers answered. You want your prayer answered? There you go. <laughs> it's like you have your prayer answers. Exactly a segula, special property. Hmm. Has a special property to have your prayers answered. And this is the praise of and, and the original place where this is in is in what's a book called the Tikkuni Zohar, Rectification of the Zohar. The Tikkuni Zohar really is a one-volume book, okay, consisting of 70 chapters, wow. all in the word Bereshit, the first word of creation, basically. 70 chapters, 
and a little bit of the couple of first verses, but most of it focuses on different ways you can cut the word Bereshit. 70 different ways you can cut that word. In other words, if you intermingle the letters and switch the letters around, you have a different meaning or a concept. Okay, the, just in the one word, the first word of the Torah. Okay, 70 chapters, and some of the chapters are very long. It's not like, okay, now we move on. We have this, now we move on. No, it doesn't work like that. That's, we're gonna, that's, who, brought this, who brought this down? This is Shema Bar Yochai himself. Oh, wow. See, they say that the Zohar was written by Shema Bar Yochai and his Chabura, his, his students or his companions. But this was him himself. This, as you were going to see, because he's going to... Okay? <clears throat> In any case, we consider that Tikkuni Zohar is called the Tamsit of the Zohar. Tamsit is like an extract. It's very concentrated. Hmm. I'm, I'm working on a podcast doing this like a page oh, a day, cool, so you can finish it in a year. That's Actually, cool, it's going to be more than a year. Hebrew and English? Well, I'm, I'm, gonna, I'm just giving out the translation in English. You won't find a translation in English. Yeah. So I'm just like Dude, that's awesome, doing it man. with an English and a parish so you can cover a little bit every day so you can finish the whole thing hopefully in a year. Shh. Yeah. yeah, it's one of those things, right? Mm. Got to wake up a little earlier. For that. <laughs> I'll buy you coffee. It's one of those projects, but I started. I'm, I'm oh, where, sure. th- there's two introductions. One is a very long introduction, which I've done several times. And then there's the very sh- then there's a second introduction, which is this prayer. Okay, the whole second introduction huh. of Tikkune Zohar is just this prayer of Petach Eliyahu, which is in all the prayer books and all the Sidurim, and they also say to say it in many other times. Okay, here. One second, I'm not at the right page. Oh, right here. Okay. Because they say also the times to say that, the great times to just say this is also going to be right after Tikkun Chatzot, it's midnight prayer on the table after you eat, after Havdalah, oh, wow. also in the Malava Malka, that's the meal that you eat in Saturday night, also before the Kiddush of Rosh Hashanah. After a, any meal of a Yom Tov, hmm. mostly Yom Tov, sorry, the meal that you eat after a Yom Tov, HaKadosh, any holy day. Uh, after you say the blessing of the trees in a circumcision, circumcision is easy because, of course, Elijah comes at every circumcision. Hmm. So somehow this is related to Elijah. Saturday nights are also related to Elijah the prophet. Yeah, yeah. How many times do they say it? 100, 100 and... Uh... I don't know. 160 times. 160? I, I was going to say 50. I thought it was 120. Huh. And I said, oh, it fits this certain thing. But no, Rabbi Yacobian told me, I think, I think 160. Huh. Any case, Elijah the prophet on Saturday <laughs> night. <laughs> Eliyahu Hanavi, the, the Ruach of the spirit of Elijah the, mm-hmm. the prophet exists again. Mm-hmm. Okay. And I also shared this on Sunday night, something very dynamic you have to be aware of. Feel it. Hmm? Feel it. Oh, sometimes I go right to sleep. Okay, mm-hmm. yeah, I was like, I, I, I you know, is it, they, usually the energy of the religious world is people just can't sleep Saturday night, they just can't, mm-hmm. right? right. So I went to this one, one guy, and I'm like, going, why is it that I can go to sleep real easy Saturday night? <laughs> so he came up with all his kind of suggestions, and he didn't have an answer. <laughs> In any case, it's a little different now. That was a few years ago. In any case, um... So anyways, he hears his prayer. It's a prayer. You have to focus on it being a prayer, and you have to practice this. Because when you practice it, and then you pray, then only until then can you come back and share with me, right, what you experienced. Okay? You have to pray and see if it was a different experience, your prayer, after you say this prayer, and then go and pray. Huh. By the way, the, the Baal Shem Tov also says a person should learn a mimer of Zohar, before davening, before praying anyways. A statement, a little passage of, of the book of the Zohar before. Because wow. it opens up the mind and it helps a person to connect easier. Okay, sometimes you just need the, yeah. the opening of the mind, you know, more better than uh, to go ahead and make the connection. Okay, so Petach Eliyahu. Eliyahu of blessed memory began and said, he said a blessed memory, he added that. But really, it just starts with Patach Eliyahu. Eliyahu opened. 
And he said, Ribon Almin, Master of the world, the Ant Hu Chad Hushpan, you are one and you cannot be counted. Master of the universe, you are unity that cannot be reckoned, cannot be counted, okay? Below Bechushban. In other words, the oneness that you are now recognizing in this meditation that you are doing, you are saying you are one, and I'm tuning in to your oneness. You are all there is, okay? When we say one, we're meaning, we're meaning one, not one and there's two, not two. We're meaning one is that's all there is, which is kind of like Bittul Yesh, okay? <laughs> This is called the nullification of ourselves. Mm-hmm. That really, you, put, you have to put yourself in the space where really God is all there is. And when you put yourself in the space of God is all there is, you don't have to sit there. You can come closer and you can have pizza. Okay? There you go. Here's this for you. This is the Petach Eliyahu. Are you familiar with that at all? The opening of Elijah the prophet? Okay, it's a special segula for uh, that the prayers could be answered. Okay? So this is the Anthu Chad, you are one. Velo Bechushban. Anthu, Ila, I'll call Ilain. You are the highest of the highs. You are the Stima, I'll call Stimin. You are the hidden of all hiddens. Leis, Machshava, Tafisa, Bachlau. There is no thought that couldn't grasp you. Okay? So here's our first introduction to this prayer is we always have to know who we are standing in front of. Okay? And when we stand in front of God, of course, we should melt anyway, our existence, basically. Okay? But there's some kind of semblance of us because we are uttering a prayer. Okay? It is, there is a recognition. There is an experience that's happening. Okay? Don't worry about that. Okay? But the interesting thing is you really have to get into the space. Okay? Is leis ta machshava tafisa baklal. There's no thought that could contain you. There's no thought, and how, how does he say that? No thought is able to grasp you at all. No matter what thought I have, it's not you, because we can never talk about God's essence. Never. This is a better print, if you want. Mm-hmm. Much darker. Unless you can, you can uh, you handle okay. that. Yeah, I can handle it. There is no thought. And when you just think about that and meditate that on that mm-hmm. for a second, okay? And you say, Leis, Machshava, Tafisa, Bachlal. You say it in Hebrew and Aramaic. There is no thought that could contain you. There is no thought. You are all there is. You are one. The highest of the highs. Hidden of all hidden. No thought can, that can contain you. So it puts you into that space, okay? Mm-hmm. Where you're in front of God and you have to realize who you're in front of. But like it's like it's amazing how we have to start off with that because you know, in prayer you always have to start off who are you in front of hmm. right yeah. and next now continuing on the prayer and who da pikas asar tikunin you brought out ten tikunin ten rectifications ten tikunin he calls them a tikun because why otherwise he says here in the perush. Why do we need a tikkun? Why do they? Why does he call the ten svirot, the ten illuminations, in the name of tikkunin? Is because that's how the, the, through. There's no other way that the worlds could exist. It, it enables the worlds to exist. These ten concepts of what we'll call ten insights, and we call them ten svirot. Because it, their svira is the lesson of sapir, or the lesson of a language of illumination. They illuminate. Okay? So I look at it as an insight. Mm-hmm. Ten insights. And really there is. Mm-hmm. Behind all the words, there's something deep that your soul, your neshama, has to really grasp. Okay? And it comes, these ten insights, they have many forms because they're so deep that actually, really, there's really no... We say that in their essence, they're so beyond even our grasping. Okay? But in any case, God will there to be ten, ten steps, ten concepts. It's not one big concept. Well, it is. 
as we're going to see. But really, for us, because we're limited, we're coming from a limited place, we need 10. Okay? So he fixed, he says, so Elijah's Antu da Pikas Asar Tikunin, you brought out 10 Tikunin, 10 rectifications, and you call them the 10 Svirot or the 10 Illuminations. Okay? 10 levels, he says it 10 levels, and we refer to them as the 10 Svirot. Okay? By them, you guide all the worlds. In other words, through these 10 insights, God guides the worlds. Lan Hagabahon, the guiding force. Okay? Anhaga, the word hanhaga in Hebrew means guiding okay. or driving, okay? Like a nahag in Hebrew is a driver. But we'll use guiding force that God ha has ten guiding forces, okay? That he uses these illuminations to guide il il almin setimin, hidden worlds, the low is galyan that are not revealed, but almin is galyan in worlds that are hidden. In other words, every single thing is guided through these ten. Ubahon is kasiyas mi nasha, and through them, you are actually your essence is hidden from us. In other words, it enables us to start to grasp you. Every single thing is going to be through these ten sphere out. You have to become familiar with them, mm -hmm. and to the degree that we become familiar with them. In other words, every single thing in this world is reflected through these ten sphere out. And that when we look at things in the world, and we'll get to this, that you see a chair, that chair comes from a certain sphera. And when you feel a certain emotion, that emotion comes from a sphera. Hmm. When you have a certain thought, that thought comes through a certain sphera, a certain illumination. And the person, when we develop ourselves to connect to that, illumination to that concept, right? So then we can understand God's driving force in the world, and then we peel off the mask of matter. In other words, we are able then to release ourselves from the grip of the physical world and enter into a more spiritual perception of everything. You have to accustom yourself to even be in the physical world and yet see things, what's deeper, to see the spiritual aspect of every single thing in the physical world, and then you become an enlightened individual. But you have to know the map. You have to know the path. You have to know. And here you have your special, we have Baruch Hashem, we have Elijah the prophet saying, here's the map. Hmm. Ten concepts. He guides everything through these ten. Every single thing in existence has to hook up to one of these ten. When you're hooked up and you know which one of the ten, so then... You have, you have released, you are in the process of releasing yourself from the influence of the physical realm, and you are now a more enlightened individual, mm -hmm. okay? You don't get so freaked out when things happen, okay? Amuna! Okay? <laughs> yeah. Let me ask you a stupid question. No such thing. I don't think there's anything such well, thing as this. everything comes from the ten. How about the evil inclination... Does that come, or is that, is that something away? No, if you look at the first chapter of the Book of Formation. Do they have that? No, one they here? don't. They didn't give you. Yeah. Okay. The first chapter, it's one of the one. Write it down. I'm going to tell no, I'm you. Gonna tell them to get it. It. I'm going to tell them. What? Tell them. Yeah, but they would need one here so I could pull it out and just. Mm -hmm. Okay. The they first chapter, which is really maybe we, we it's, you know, it's. Definitely, it's just like it's a, it's a journey, okay? But it goes into the directions of space, time, and consciousness. That the universe is divided into three things. Space, physical space, you have six directions. Time, you have past and future. Present really doesn't exist because present is constantly going from past to future, okay? Even though we have some kind of present. We're trying to grasp the present. We're trying to appreciate the present. But as soon as you're in the present, boom, it's gone. All right? Right? So there's only the dimension of the past and the dimension of the future. How do you like that? Because everybody, all the therapists are saying, you gotta, 
And it's true. It no, it's true. It is true. No, most because most people's brains are present. Okay? It's, it's habit. No, no, no. Sorry. Most people's brains are not present. They're either in the past or the future. Yeah. It's true. Mm -hmm. It's really true. You know how I live? Yesterday is history. Tomorrow is a mystery. Today is the present from Hashem. Enjoy it. Because we can't change yesterday, and we don't know what's going to happen tomorrow. So why worry? People worry about what happened, what's going to happen. Why? Why not just enjoy today? Hashem gives us today. Enjoy today. And don't worry about yesterday or tomorrow. That's You're right. No, the problem is most of our senses. You know, the, the the big rule is wherever your thoughts are, that's where you are. Mm. Wherever your thoughts are, that's where you are. It's a huge, it's huge rule. Okay? Yeah. We're if because really we are soul. Our bodies are just a garment. Okay, but if a person that identifies with himself as just being the body, of course he's gonna say, What are you talking about, Rabbi? I mean, you know, I'm sitting here in Houston, you know. But if your mind is in the galleria, that's where really where you are, because really our essence is our soul. And your thoughts more stick with your soul, because it's the lightest garment around your soul. Okay? Mm -hmm. So if your thoughts are in the Galleria or Walmart or wherever, even though your physical body is here, you're really over there. Okay? You're not really here. You're not really present. Yeah, so the, the idea is where do people go with their minds? You know? People ask the question in psychology, who do you want to be? Who are you really? Right? Or what do you want to do? And then the other and third question is, where do you want to go? Hmm. Right now. Where do you want to be? Where do you want to be right now? Right? Because wherever your, your thoughts are, that is where you are. Okay? Where do you want to be right here now? You're right. We only have the present and it is a gift. <laughs> what? And we think you're the woman now, Pesach. <laughs> oh, yeah. People, we, women, they're already on the scrubbing. Media. They're thinking about that stove or how, who can they get to scrub the stove and how to get out of it. Or how to get out of Passover, right? <laughs> So in any case, okay, so uh, you're right. Most people's brains are not present, right? In other words, if they're sitting in front of people, either if they're not on their cell phone or, uh, you know, somewhere else. But, you know, all I'm telling you is in the spherot aspect, I don't really see it, okay? Maybe it's in between the two spherot, which are the past and the future, Okay, Chachma and Bina. But you don't see the present? It, it, I, I didn't see it in the chapter. I didn't see it in chapter one of Sefer Yitzhira. I didn't see it. It could be I haven't done, I haven't gone over it in a while. But anyway, no, 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 I'm just going on the three dimensions. We're cutting space, we're cutting reality into three sections. Space, time, and consciousness. Nefesh. Consciousness is two ways. Good or evil. Because you're asked the question, right? Where does evil fit in? So Malchut, in the direction of the Svirot, Malchut, the lowest of the ten, is the direction of evil. Because it has a very huge potential for evil. Because Malchut, the last of the Svirot, is the pleasure principle. It's how we take in pleasure and our intentions when we take in pleasure. And that really is the every, that's the game ball. That's the Shechina. That's, the, that's where you, we score. Not everything else. Everything else is well, just a yeah, help for that. It, it's like a person will say, will think, should I or shouldn't I? Should I, shouldn't I what? Should I do it or should I not do it? So, and, yes. And, and that's the, where the evil may come in, if you, you know, if it's a bad thought, you know. But you know something inside, really, our, our, it's the battle. It's the battle. And our neshama has to learn Torah through the study of Torah. Through, take more, take more. Through the study of Torah, yeah. the empowering of our nefesh, the awareness of our neshama, the awareness of our neshama, and thank God, the Torah, and all of the teachers of the Torah, right? And the instruction of all of the mitzvahs, it helps us to hopefully work to fight to get an edge, because really... If you look in Moshe Chaim Lutzato Derech Hashem, 
the way of God, the classic work there, puts everything in its perspective. Once, the, once Adam ate from the tree of knowledge of good and evil, it was downhill, man. Mm -hmm. In other words, he had the upper edge, the, the soul had the upper edge over the, the body and in the influence of evil. But once they caved in, boom, it flipped. flipped. <laughs> and evil totally has the biggest, huge edge over good. And it takes a tremendous fight, a tremendous struggle. That is, is, a, is a, an, a, almost, an, a, I call it a fight to the death. It really is. And it literally is. We have to constantly surge forward, right? To develop ourselves. Because it's as long as we're in a body, our body has a yetzer hara. Yeah. The evil in, exists. So it does exist in the spherotic realm. Okay, not, we, we don't say malchut is evil, but it's the direction of evil. There's the potential for evil there. Okay? Did I answer your question? Yes. Okay. Now where are we? All right. Now, so first we were introduced to God. There's an Ain Sof, there's something which you cannot fathom. No thought can fathom. As soon as you have a thought, it's not it. Okay? It's called Ain Sof, unlimitedness. And that is all there is. So now we're taking a prayer, you are all there is. And that you hear, we're going on a journey here because really that's what Elijah's doing. He's taking us on a spiritual journey. This prayer is a prayer, but it's a meditation and it's taking you from the highest realms to where no thought can be, and it's going now to ten spherot, and now he's going to get into describing the ten spherot. And this is putting really every single thing that we've learned all these weeks together, okay? So he says, okay, these ten spherot, he are the guiding force of the universe. And, and now he goes on to say, So he says, through them you are concealed from human race. We said that already. Pause for music interlude. Okay, now we're ready. You are the one who unites them and joins them. You unite all of these svirot, these illuminations, and you join them, which means you put them all together. They're not separate energies. They're not separate energies. Or begin to ant milagav, and since you are inside of them, in the most inner hidden places, you're inside the one unifying light is, is inside all of these. You dwell within them. Anyone who would dare try to separate one of these ten spherot from another is considered having tried to separate your unity. In other words, if a person would think if he would get such a high degree of knowledge and understanding of these ten spherot, and he would think, okay, if I just stick with Chachmah, and I just have a relationship with Chachma. Let's do this, right? And ignore the other ones. In other words, he thinks he could separate it and pay attention, focus on the one sphera, and separate that from the rest of it. It's like, God forbid, cutting an arm off. Okay? Because it's like one body here. We're looking at a body with a soul. In a certain sense, in the spiritual realm, something way beyond us, these ten sphero take the form of a certain kind of body, a way of God directing, okay, his, his energy in guiding the world, a guiding force, but he's within it, like a soul is in a body. So you can't think, God forbid, that you can separate a right foot from a left foot, okay? S separate a right foot from a left foot, you cannot think that, okay? Because if one were to do that, so then what would happen was, it would be, he's like separating, it says, it's as if he's separating your unity. So he's starting to make two deities instead of one deity. Two sources instead of one source. We're always, a, we're a one source people. Okay? One stop shop. One shop stop. How does it go? One, one shop stop. Thank you. Okay? We're one, one source one and only shop. one yeah. source. There's no other source. Don't think that this sphera or that sphera or this sphera is its source on its own. No such thing. Okay? Okay, going on. The Elaine Asar Sviran Inun Azlin Visidran. Now these ten spherot go according to their order. Chad Arich Vechad Katsir Vechad Benuni. One is long, one is short, and one is middle. What does that mean? What are we talking about here? Let's see if I have it here on my little chart here. Thank God I do. 
We speak about the Alvun. This is the array of the ten Svirot classically. Here, I'll put it here. Yes, you can see it. Take a picture. Boom. Print it. Okay. So this is the ten Svirot. And I notice that the ten Svirot, usually the light comes down. It goes to Chachma, to Bina, to Chesed, to Gevura, to Tiferet, Netzach, Chod, Yesod, and Malchut. And it goes through the flow. But this is the rectified Svirot. And you notice here that I drew these lines here because there are three columns. Guiding force has three columns. One is long, one is short, and one is middle. Okay? What does it mean, long? Okay? So, we look at, we go to Perkyavot. Chapters of the Fathers, first chapter. Second, first chapter, second Mishnah. First chapter, second Mishnah. Uh, Shimon Atzadik was the remnant of the men of the Great Assembly, and he said the world stands on three things. What are they? Prayer. Yes. Hesed. Yes, and one more. Yeah. What? No, Avodah. What? Torah. 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 Avoda. Mm -hmm. And Gemilut Chasadim. Torah, learning Torah, study of Torah. Okay? Avoda, service, temple service, classically understood as temple service, sacrifices. We don't have that anymore. Yeah, so now we have prayer. That's called avoda. Avoda shibalev, work of the heart. Mm -hmm. And then there is acts of loving kindness. These are the three pillars. So when he said that, and you're reading it in Pergiavos, and it's really nice, and it's cool, and it's like, oh, yeah, okay, cool. I can, I can dig that. But he's got a source for it. It's this! <laughs> okay. The ultimate source is this. These are the three columns. The question is which one goes to which, okay? Which is the right, which is the left, and which is the center. So we say the right column is always the long one because that's chesed. Right is always the thing that is most uh, given precedent, okay? We always give precedent over the right. When we dress, we dress with our right. Which shoe you put on in the morning? Right shoe. When you wash your hands, right. When you wash your body, right. Everything right, okay? Except for the head. The head is always first, but after that, the body goes right. All precedence takes on the right. The work of the temple, right, had to be done with the right hand. Right is always the aspect of the kindness extending to others, to the Zulat, Kodesh Boruchu, his world, God's world, and the creatures in it, okay? And that's what we stand for. That's why it's long. Because it's also long because it, that's the nature of it. God is always extending himself. Okay? Left is short. Left is short. Okay? Because it's gavura. It's power. That is really the work of prayer. Prayer is called the left column. Huh. Okay? Because really, the left column, according to the, uh, to the sulam, works from below to above. Oh. It's weird, okay. but that's how it works. Instead okay? Of yeah. It doesn't go like that. The right side would be from above to yes. below, and the left side would be from below to above. Yeah, and I think the middle one kind of works both. Mm. Okay? Huh. Okay, but I'm not sure about that. It's just not, but I know that he says that the, the, the way, obviously, a voda or service or prayer works, and we go from, oh, open yes. our mouths, we, ex yeah. we open up our hearts, Bring we open up our souls, and we release. Yeah. So it works from below to above. That's how it works. Okay? That's why I could understand Rabbi Arush. He said, if you get something and you didn't pray for it, it could damage you. He brought from the Ari. I didn't see it in the Ari. I didn't see it in the writings of Rabbi Luria, Rabbi Yitzchak Luria. But he says, if you didn't pray for it and you get it, it could actually damage you. It's not good for you. So therefore the point is, Pray for everything. <laughs> Don't be afraid to ask God for everything. Some people were shocked when I told them that. What? What? How can you do that? If you, I need a pen in the house. Yes. God, please. I need a pen. Right? My kingdom for a pen. Right? Whatever. You have to pray for every single thing all the time. God wants that connection. Like, you have no idea. For the smallest things, you have to ask God. So definitely you pray for everything. Everything. That's why you need an hour a day. 
right? He doesn't do just Rabbi Aros says sometimes you just get, you know, you got to do six hours a day. Mm-hmm. You know? Go out and pray for six hours, right? Mm-hmm. If it feels, right? Hopefully the mosquitoes won't eat you alive <laughs> in Texas, okay? In any case, pray for everything, okay? Um, that's, that's the left column. That's called short. Because really also short is gavura, it's power, okay? Kindness is, oh, just give it to them. The left says, no way. It's the opposite force. It's like, no. And then the middle is called rachamim. It's called compassion. Because why? What? That's Torah. Torah is always called the middle column. Because Torah is always the balance. It's always balancing a person from between left and right. It always has the balance. Everything is in, it's in, it's, it's just so, so perfect, all the mitzvahs. Okay? It takes the Yetzirah into consideration, would you believe it? Right? It does. The biggest example where it takes the evil inclination into consideration is Ashes Yafas Toar, the, the, the captive woman, right? If a person is out in battle and among the captives he sees a woman there, like a non Jewish woman, and has eyes for her, right? In the middle of the raging battle. So the, the Torah can't say, the Torah would like to say, no, oh, sir, forbidden, right? It doesn't say that. It says, okay, you want to marry her, take her home. She's got to sit in the floor for a month, her change hideous. her clothes, shave her head, ugly nails, the whole bit. And after a month, if you still want her, go for it, <laughs> right? right? But first, but the Torah doesn't say outright no. It, it, it takes factors into consideration to keep balance. That's why it's the middle pillar. It maintains a balance, okay? In any case, okay? So we have here, these ten spherot operate in three columns, okay? One is long, one is short, and one is middle. That's the Torah. The Torah is the middle one. Benoni. Be'antuhu, Elijah's guiding us on this journey. Be'antuhu. The Anhiglon, you guide all of these ten illuminations. Veles man da Anhiglach, nobody guides you. Lola Ela, Lola Tata, Velo Mikol Sitaran. In other words, you're not bound by the influence. Once you created these garments, so to speak, these ten spherot, these illuminations, and you're dressing in them, so to speak, your soul, your neshama, you're not bound by any of them. Still, you're so way beyond. Okay? Don't think that God, God forbid, is, be, is bound by these ten spherot once he has dressed himself in it, so to speak. Okay? He's still beyond it. Okay? Going on, Levushin to Kinas loan. Now he's going different, because every single thing that here he, Elijah was focusing on was called, what? The world of Atsilu. That we're right, in, in, the, in, the, in the Kabbalistic doctrine, we know that we have four worlds. The highest to the lowest, Atzilut is called nearness. Then you have Bria, Yitzira. You all do this for those people there. And Asiya. This means nearness or emanation. This means creation. This means uh, formation. And this means making. We're way down here. We, we, we guess. We guess. Okay. Everything from the spherot comes from here. Okay. Way up here, man. And these spheres are so bright. We can't even handle it. It's way beyond us. Okay? Because we're talking in like the realm of, of absolute unity. Okay? So God has to fix garments. And these are considered to be the garments of this. Shades. Sometimes the sun is so bright. You walk out there without sunglasses. And it's reflecting off here, reflecting off everywhere. It's painful. You need to shade it, right? So he's got shade. So he calls them levushin. These are called garments. Hmm. You have fixed garments for them. To be naihu from them, parachim yishmasim livnei nasha. From the garments comes out the neshamas to people. So if you want to know where do my garments come, where does my soul come from? It's garment material. You come from. This, the, the cosmic good will. <laughs> <laughs> the cosmic good will. What are you will? talking about, Rabbi? <laughs> Saks Fifth Avenue. Okay. This is Saks. Okay. Walmart. Goodwill. Okay. <laughs> like, or Macy's. 
Saks, Macy's, and JCPenney. Okay? So, <laughs> G. Okay. So in any case, okay, um, so you fixed garments, and from these garments, fly out, fly out, parchin, the ring, parech, blossom, the souls to people. But kama gufin tekinaslon. Now, those are just garments. You fixed a number of bodies, kama gufin tekinas, you fixed bodies for these, ten spherot. Okay? What are these bodies? So now these bodies are said to be what we call spiritual vessels. And then once again, they act as something that reduces the light. So here I'm just telling you now, and we're going to... Yeah. So, yeah, we'll stop here. So just to stop here now, so what we have here is we have... Atsilut, okay? And in Atsilut, what you're going to have is you're going to have a neshama, a soul. You're going to have a body, a spiritual body, a vessel, a, and then you're going to have garments. So we have three characters in the play. Mm -hmm. Soul, body, and garments, just like we see in us. We have a neshama, we have, there's, then there's the body, and then there's things which cover the body. So in a certain sense, in the spiritual realm, there's this very much a setup of the same thing, using what we're going to see is the, the body actually, he says here, are the names of God. The names are said to be, or does he see it here? They reduce, they filter out the inner light of the ten spherot. Okay? And these gufim are the names of the three kalim. There's three vessels in that there is in all of the spherot from the ten spherot. Basically, there's different holy names that we have ascribed to each one of the spherot. Each sphere has a name. Right? Did you know that? I think I gave that to you, a sheet like that once. Don't know if it's here. Okay? But I found it. It pulls out. I think I pulled it out of the book. So, oh, maybe this is it. Is this it? Let's roll, roll the dice. Yes! <laughs> We are blessed. I'll make a photocopy for everybody, okay? But I got to keep one of these. But here, basically, you'll see, I got this from actually, it's in that book there, Meditation and Kabbalah. Mm -hmm. It oh, is. Okay. I gave it out. It's not, a, I don't think it's in there. Okay. This is not in there. But basically, each one of these ten spheres has a certain name mm -hmm. to it. You have to know which name mm -hmm. it is, okay? Mm -hmm. And we'll study it because really it's a big meditation thing, actually. Yeah. Really, it's from the, yeah, I gave it a sheet, exactly. Oh. When you say Tehillim, you're hitting different names. When you're reading Chumash, you're hitting different names. And every single thing has its place. Every single thing has its influence. But just for us right now, in our purpose, you have Neshama, soul. You have body, which is the names of the Sphero, the name of God in each, within each of these Sphero. There's also a chant in here like that. Right? And then what we're going to do is we're going to have the garments, which are the different worlds which I described to you here, are garments. Soul, body, garment. Okay, we'll stop now. What would be the thought, the speech, and the deed in the, right here? Just, I think it would be thought. One second. I have it in my chart. Um, you have... Oh, you want me to go off the live? Yeah, go off the live. 